Good morning. Uh, Kathy is sitting in on the meeting for me, okay, for Teresa. So good morning, everybody. Good I got morning. Go. Good morning. <laughs> Bye, Teresa. <laughs> Bye-bye. Nice to almost see you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me, Mike? I can hear you now. Okay, good. Morning, Tony. Morning, Commissioner. <laughs> All right, we're live on Facebook and we are recording. So, uh, Mike, when nine o'clock hits, you're good to go. Thank you Thank very you. much, Mr. Jimmy. No problem, sir. I like your new backdrop, Shane. Mount Rushmore. Love it. Love it. Okay, according to my uh, iPad here, it is nine o'clock. Let's begin this work session with Sunday County Commissioner. The topic today is uh, uh, proper documentation and uh, bringing everybody up to date on the amount of CARES Act money that we have been distributed from the state. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's approximately $2 million. The county has about $923,000 at its disposal to use for the purpose of um, reimbursing us for, for COVID-related expenses. Stacy, you have up here the amounts that each township has been appropriated, each city has been appropriated. Um, so you can kind of look at that and know how much reimbursement they can receive if they document things properly. Yeah, and I think um, talking to Julie yesterday, she only had maybe five resolutions. I don't know if she's received any more, um, but the villages and the township cities have to do the resolution, get it to OBM and the auditor's office before she can release their funds. Um, I, I know City of Tiffin, City of Astoria has done it, and I think Hopewell, um, Attica maybe. Other, other than that, I'm not sure who else, um, but she was going to send in another notice to the entities to, you know, please get their resolutions in to get them their disbursements. Okay, but anything that's reimbursable from the county the county has, has done whatever they need to do to allow the different departments and electeds to uh, submit their costs, right? Yeah, well, that's what we're gonna talk to you about today. That's the $923,890.30. Right, but not, the individual uh, department heads and electeds, they don't need to submit anything to Julie at this point as far as being, uh, you cut out there a minute, Mike. 
they don't they don't need to submit resolutions we're taking care of that right oh correct sorry yeah. yes got it yep okay so uh let's kind of uh talk about the procedure uh stacy wilson has talked with julie and there will be a quote unquote COVID committee if you will put together and that committee uh will come up with a form and a format uh for folks to submit their COVID related expenses. It'll be relatively simple. Uh, it will just ask what the reimbursement is for, uh, why it's COVID related, and then if there are any receipts or other documentation you want to attach, that will be fine. But we need to have a central location to know how close we're getting to our $923,890. Uh, remember this, that if you are, uh, I wouldn't hesitate to submit as much as you wish or as much as you can document because even if it is over and what we consider to be an allotment and there is money left from those folks who did not submit their resolutions, then you could be reimbursed uh, more than them that you might have ordinarily. And the same goes for the city of Attica, Bloomville, Bettsville, Tiffin, et cetera. Uh, even though the city of Tiffin, for example, is allotment is 366, if there is money left over from the $2,019,000, uh, they could submit more expense that could be uh, reimbursed to them. So, Stacy, what what are your plans as far as the uh, committee goes? Uh, when, when will you meet and what kinds of things do you think you need to do? Um, and I don't know if Julie's on yet. Um, what we had talked about is, you know, if the commissioner's okay with, um, me setting on that, I didn't know if any one of you wanted to sit on that. Obviously I'll go over some expenses with you, um, before, if I had any questions, um, I would bring it to you before I'd approve anything. Uh, Julie would like to be on it along with one of her staff, not necessarily the staff being the approver just to have a uh, second uh, person there to learn. Um, she had mentioned John Spar, and uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to him yesterday to give him the fair warning, but I asked Ken to let him know that um, we recommended John. And if there's uh, anyone else that's interested, I mean, you know, four or five people, we don't want to get too many people on it. Um, we think we got pretty good guidelines uh, right now, and they're still coming in. Things are changing and updating, um, but uh, um, that's... It would be good to have Beth, our representative from the health department, on it. Uh, we can certainly... I mean, I, I'm, these are just suggestions at this point. Uh, uh, whatever makes the job easier. Right. Yeah, because of the health department being they their their own board and their own entity, um, I don't necessarily see those expenses. Um, let's see. I'll, I had the, the girls at the auditor's office help me walk through. I can pull these reports now. Here's some examples of some of the uh, costs we've had so far. You know, gloves, hand sanitizer. Um, you know, masks, um, I know maintenance will have some, you know, like the plexiglass, the sneeze guards, um, unemployment will, we will be getting reimbursed. If I understood Tasha correctly, that will, will be, um, reimbursed to the county. If we've already spent it, it'll be reimbursed. And then I think going forward, they'll cover that. Hey, Stacy. Yes. So um, is the unemployment, the reimbursement of unemployment, does that come out of this money or is that a separate bucket of money? To my understanding, it's a separate. Now we've probably covered it so far because we just now recently got that notification, um, but I'm not sure how much Tasha's had to pay so, already. So I, I'm following you. I, 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 sure we're going to get reimbursed for the unemployment but uh, i don't think it's going to be charged against this 
nine hundred thousand. It comes from another area, right? Correct. It's still income. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Yep. Hey, Stacy. It's Kathy at Job and Family. Um, do you know? Do we have to recode everything? Like, say we have ten thousand dollars in costs. Do we have to recode everything for the auditor? Um, if you and hopefully she'll be able to get on. Um, if you already have it in the system, um, you know, obviously it'll make our jobs a little bit easier because we can just pull the report. Um, I know some departments have just been tracking it on their own. It was more uh, convenient and easier for them to track that on their own. I think they will just have to, you know, submit to us that, you know, like Mike said, the little questionnaire, is this a necessary COVID expense? And please explain why and then attach the, um, the documentation. Uh, but um, as far as I know, Julie didn't say that you would have to go back into the system and uh, recode it if you didn't code it the first time. Okay, thanks. And then yeah. I think going forward, um, the state's uh, directive, OBM's directive was that any new expenses uh, going forward be paid out of the um, fund that we created, the Coronavirus Relief Fund. They want us to pay it straight out of that. Uh, we did pass the budget last week, so we do have some money in uh, that budget, supplies, equipment, um, other expense for reimbursements and salaries. Uh, you know, we might have to move a little bit of money around because um, I didn't put any money into contract services. And uh, Julie gave me a big example yesterday of um, like her, uh, the wall and the door that she would like to put up on the real estate side. Obviously that's a contract service and uh, you know, <laughs> that hasn't been done yet. We could put the purchase order in place and pay it forward directly out of this fund. Um, but then the committee would obviously look at those and try to determine, do we think it's necessary? And um, obviously for her, um, you know, she deems that necessary to have that, that separation from, from the public. Okay. So at this point in time, getting down, we'll, I think we'll kind of go do a round table with those folks on the call. Any other slides you want to show, Stacey? Uh, no, just kind of give you an update of the report right now of the stuff that has been coded in the system is about 233,000 and that's uh, countywide, uh, general, non-general. And um, uh, Barb left me a voicemail this morning saying payroll, including all the general and non-general, is about 445000 So I just wanted to uh, okay. give you an idea of where we're at right now, and that's just what has been coded in the system. Hey, Stacy, it's Kathy again. Um, Steve is willing to be on the committee as well. Okay. He's the one I haven't met yet, right? <laughs> Yes, that's right. And so I said it might be a good opportunity for him to meet everybody. <laughs> Delegation is a wonderful thing, isn't it, Kathy? It is beautiful. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, so, so it's July. We have to the end of the year. So we're just going to form the committee, track our costs, and when we run out of money, Assuming we use up all the money, um, we'll just continue to keep track of COVID expenses in hopes that round two or possibly any unused money in this two million would also then come back to the county, right? Right. And we're encouraging the townships and villages, uh, you know, they have to do the work and code it, and but the money's there for them. I mean, I, I'd like, I'd rather see them get it, but if they don't use it, then it would revert back to the county, as long as we had expenses tracked. Uh, well, 
if I could. Commissioner, that's a question. Commissioner Paradiso. Yeah. You know, I I was thinking about this. If um, if there is a residual, if if a particular political subdivision doesn't uh, use its allocation and it comes back to the general pool, I think the the fairest thing, the most fair thing to do would be for it to come back and then go back out according to the LGF formula again. <clears throat> and after that, if it's uh, not all used up out again, according to the LGF formula until uh, it's been ended according to uh, the LGF formula that we already have agreed upon and we've exhausted all uh, COVID expense. So does that make sense? Yeah, so I think what you're saying is instead of if one subdivision didn't use all their money, instead of all that money coming back to the county, then everyone else would have an opportunity in the county to uh, use that money as well. If, if Along that line, too. So just to clarify. Shane. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, for some reason, my camera's not working, but can you hear me okay? Yeah, is this Julie? Hi, yeah. Yep, good morning. Um, good morning. So yeah, the way the way it's structured right now by law is that if one the the subdivisions do not elect to um, take their portion or request their portion, that still sits in the in the fund that we're maintaining. And two, if they don't spend it by I think it's October 15th, that's the second allocation of anything that's left in that fund. And it follows the local government. It'll be distributed uh, along the LGF By, form of the distribution. described. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Julie, can you um, clarify that? What I thought I understood with the conversation was that they had to have it encumbered by October 15th, but they still had the time frame to spend it until December, um, but if they didn't have it encumbered, then it would go back to you for redisbursement. Is that how you understood it? That is correct. Okay. That is, right. And to dovetail off of that, Stacy, expenditures have to be made this year. Correct. No expenditures of these dollars can be made next year. Julie, no. is that calendar year? Yes. That's correct, Kathy. Okay, and Julie, are you recoding stuff? Do we have to recode stuff? Um, at this time, I'm still reviewing the grant as to what the grant is dictating for us to process uh, previous expenditures. My initial thought is that we're probably gonna have to, uh, oh, I can't think of the word, uh, recode those uh, expenditures under the grant, Kathy. And if that's the case, we will do that. But again, it's going to be based off of the recommendation of, of the committee, if that's how the commissioners uh, uh, would like to pursue. Okay, or, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, could we go, uh, uh, so let, just as a, kind of a short recap here before we do other things. A committee will be formed that committee will come up with a form and a format to submit to that committee uh, COVID related expenses um, so that we will be able to have a central location. And I'm suggesting that be Stacy Wilson to accumulate costs that are COVID related at this point. The disbursements will be made to, uh, as, as Commissioner Thomas said, local government funding formula, the LGF formula, until such time as we have money left uh, that uh, that we will be able to disperse additional monies to those areas that may need it if other areas have not submitted a, a resolution to the auditor's office to get reimbursed for those funds. Our, and, and on that committee at this point would be Julie, uh, Stacy Wilson, John Spar, and the gentleman from ODJ, uh, Job and Family Services, Steve, is that, is that right, Kathy? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so we have that committee put together. Hopefully they will be meeting soon 
come up with this. Is that Stacy Wilson? Is that a summary of where we're at with this thing right now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, did you want to, me to ask Beth? Um, I I sent a chat that said we would have someone if you would like for us to. Yes, I I, I would. Okay, I great. Good idea. Right. And I sent one as well from Regional Planning that we'd be willing to be on that committee as well to help communicate to the townships and villages. Okay. Well, okay, but it, just I don't I don't I think the goal was when I talked to Stacy initially is to keep the committee relatively small. But again, I'm not sure of the commissioner's wishes. And to the point for the townships, et cetera. Just to clarify, this committee would just be looking at county expenditures, correct? Yes. Okay. So are you suggesting that the townships form their own committee? If that's what they would like to do, I know OTA, the Ohio Township Association already has resources for them. Okay. Um, to help with this process. And I've been working with several townships as well. I think Charlene has mentioned she's worked with them as well. In the villages. I think that at least yeah. one of the meetings that you would have, uh, Julie and Stacy, we ought to invite the townships or those that might want to come so they understand what our procedures are, what forms we're using, and how we're going to try to document things uh, to at least give them a heads up as to what we're doing. They can do what they wish uh, based on their uh, formula, but I do think it would be in the best interest of the county, if we had a similar or an exact format that the townships use as well as the county offices, uh, it would make life, I would believe, much easier for everyone. So I've got no problem on the 923,000 the committee just deal with uh, county items. But I think that we ought to leave the, leave the suggestion open that there could be a meeting or should be. Or any of the other cities that might want to come to review what our decisions have, had, have been at this point. Um, I would agree with Mike that having those forms available for the townships, especially, and several of the villages would be very nice. They are asking for templates already for things. So um, if I have something that I can work with them and get to them and explain to them how to use and get it so they can get it back to Julie or have it if for in case they get audited. Um, that would be very helpful and it would be um, cohesive across the board. Everybody would be doing the same thing and I think they would like that. So, so I, as I would visualize it, the committee probably would need to meet a couple of times before getting the townships involved uh, in order to come up with what they believe are proper procedures. At that point then, um, either disseminate that information to uh, uh, regional planning and let them meet with the townships or invite the townships to one of the meetings. I agree with Julie that this this committee ought to be specifically for the county, uh, but that we need to uh, assist the townships and other political subdivisions if we can. Okay, let's uh, let's kind of go around the around the. Uh, the Brady screen here, if you will, <laughs> uh, and see what we have uh, comment wise uh, from folks and question wise. Jay, I, I see you, my screen, your bottom left. So uh, you're, you know, you're top right to me, really. But uh, what do you got? Anything this morning? One in your heart as well, though, Mike, right? <laughs> That's right. Nothing, I guess, at this point, we are. Um, busy we're holding our own um i will say uh at least covid's getting closer to home for us you know we keep hearing stories of people having contact or at least people like two months ago people didn't know anybody who had it and now i know i'm having staff persons that are coming in contact or having we're having issues with um it coming closer to us and i think that's just a, a fact of life and we're going to have to you know, work to figure out what our operations are going to be when someone does get exposed and figure out what we're going to do when we have those things that happen. So, but uh, we've had a pretty full docket and we're holding our own, I guess I would say. And we certainly appreciate the help and support of everyone else here. That's it, Mike. You bet. Thanks. Well, if Teresa's replacing, we could follow up right with her. She's <laughs> my screen, she's right above Jay. I don't know if that's proper or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I really don't have anything to say, I guess. Judge Meyer said most of it. Um, okay. If there's anything that I can help, I do all the, um, the billing, paying <clears throat> vouchers. Um, if there's anything that I need to do on my end, just let me know. Okay, Beth, you always have words of wisdom. Do you have anything to add today? Well, words of wisdom in some areas. One thing is we do, we of course are keeping track of all of the time and, and everything we have spent here with all of our employees. I just wanted to clarify, there will be some for future expenses. Are we correct in that? Because we have had some federal money we've been able to use for up until now, but that is almost gone. So will this be able to be utilized for future as well? I think just through 2020, is that right, Stacy Wilson? Right. But and from this time forward. So yes, we would still have expenses. Of yeah, did you code those in Julie's system as COVID even though you got reimbursement? Yes, Anita, Anita has done that, yes. Okay, so we'll need to get a report of what you've been reimbursed to make sure we take it off of um, what we reimburse you because we can't uh, we can't double dip and get right. That, that's why I was just double checking because I didn't want us to do anything we shouldn't be doing. Right. Yeah. Board of Elections is the same way. They've spent their initial twenty six thousand, but has spent like fifty two thousand. Um, they're going to be getting some additional grant money that will not allow them to recoup that twenty five. So we'll use that twenty five to get reimbursed, but not the original twenty six. So. Okay. Well, one of the reasons that we want to be as accurate as we can be at this point, uh, for those of you that aren't involved with the numbers every day, uh, the state of Ohio did get $1.2 billion with a B for the counties and the other political subdivisions, right? They have dispersed $350 million of that in this round that we received $2 million. Now, so there is uh, significant money left. Um, I think, you know, more than $400 million left or $800 million left that uh, we are lobbying, we being County Commissioner Association and uh, some of our legislators to be reimbursed for operating expenses out of the rest of that money. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, it may, might all still be COVID related, but we need to make sure that we get this right because there will be another round of funding coming. Uh, how it will be dispersed, we're not certain, and what can what it can be used for, we're not certain. Just suffice it to say, the state is still sitting on eight hundred and fifty million dollars that, by dictate, they need to disperse to the counties and the other political subdivisions at some point. Okay, I see, Mr. Harrison. Anything to add here? Paul, are you napping or can you get off mute there? All right, uh, you, may, you may have left the, uh, Elvis has left the building. Uh, Beth Dietz, how about you? What do you got to add? Hi. Not a whole lot. You guys are doing great. Thanks for keeping us in the loop. Uh, you betcha. Mr. Majors? No, sir, I don't really have anything to add. Okay. John, I see you're on. Would you like to uh, bring anybody up to date on anything? John Sparr going once, twice. There we go. There Had we trouble go. with the mute button. Um, nothing uh, pressing. We had um, curtailed the weekly shipments from the state uh, up until last week. Uh, and ahead of uh, the EMA perceived that we were going to have a spike in the in the state, so um, I opened up that faucet again to try and get some more PPE in, um, just to make sure we're covered for the next couple of months. Uh, but we're watching that supply very closely. Um, I'm happy to serve on the uh, committee and um, bring in the resources of the uh, Ohio Emergency Management Agency and their help in figuring out what we can and can't do with this money. Um, and that's about it. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, Mrs. Uckleberry, I see you're out there. 
What do we have to offer today? I don't think I have anything to add. You're covered it very well. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Mark? Our engineer, are you uh, available to speak? Okay. Uh, Lori, from the Board of Elections, anything to add from your end? No, um, we're just getting ready for this uh, uh, general election. We've got a lot of things that we have to do um, security-wise, and then um, for the PPE, John has been wonderful. He's going to supply us with some face shields and face masks uh, for election day and in early office voting, but um, we're just going to roll with this one day at a time. All right, thank you. I see Mr. Ditto is with us. Anything from the great city of Columbus or whatever its name is going to be? <laughs> That's a great way to put it, Commissioner. No, thank you. No, I think you covered it all very well. And we are continuing to talk with Ohio's congressional delegation as well as state legislative leaders about the need to release some of that additional money that you mentioned um, and just give the, you the flexibility to spend it on the needs that you see fit in the county. So. We'll keep you updated as those conversations progress, but uh, you covered everything very well. Okay, thank you, sir. Who did I miss out there? Anybody need to add anything today? Hey, Mike, just a couple things. One is I just want to remind everybody that this money, even though it comes from the uh, you know, magic uh, printing press of federal government, that we would, you know, we still have to be good stewards of taxpayer money. So we, you know, we're not looking for expenses that wouldn't be expended uh, if we wouldn't have had this pandemic. So I, I know it doesn't need to be said with this group, but it's important for anybody listening to know that we still want to continue to be good stewards of taxpayer money with this. This isn't uh, some lottery winning or something. Uh, the second thing is, is I would ask everybody who has COVID expenses. Uh, and once you have those defined, to share those with the committee so that we have line of sight to what might be the residual so that other political subdivisions can start planning for our expenses and what they may be in re reimbursed. Uh, you know, we know that city of Tiffin and city of Fostoria have, uh, this county has significant expenses. Uh, some other political subdivisions, not so much. So once you know, please share with us, and that'll give uh, everyone else who's budgeting uh, a better uh, idea of what they may anticipate being reimbursed in the future. So just a couple thoughts. Okay, perfect. Commissioner so, Kirshner. Yes. I'm sorry, Commissioner Kirshner. Yes. Um, it, so just to remind taxpayers, today is the last day of tax collection, and I'm sure uh, our Seneca County Treasurer, Paul Harrison, is very busy with that. Uh, just looking at the numbers right now, uh, he has collected in second half collection over $15 million. So, and today's the last day, so I'm sure he's going to get quite a bit more to be settled out to the entities throughout the county. Uh, but back, back to the CARES Act dollars, if I can just, uh, I just want to read an excerpt from uh, some of the guidance we've received. And I think Shane and, and uh, all the commissioners have alluded to it, that it's important that we have effective internal controls and that every CRF or relief dollar should be accounted for with supporting documentation. And that may, documentation um, needs to evidence what the funds were expended for in, in accordance with the federal, state, and local regulations. So um, we definitely want to make sure that we're in compliance with that because this will be an audited um, single item next year. And this uh, helps us in the transparency to taxpayers as well, in, as, well as helping to keep our audit costs down, hopefully. Very good. As I said earlier today, if it isn't written down, it isn't done. So we do need to make sure that it's documented. That's the reason that we're forming the committee, uh, which I think is a great idea. And also, you know, setting the foundation for any future monies that might come. So we kind of have a streamlined uh, procedure uh, to get things accomplished. I have a, I have a question, Mike. Um, 
So Stace and Julie, I think one of the um, uh, objectives of the committee is to get an eligible or ineligible uh, reimbursement. So if it's a gray area, you're not sure, the committee will discuss it and, and, and then make that decision one way or the other. Is that how you see it? Yes. Um, yeah, a initially, you know, it may be something where we go back for additional information. I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. And or, you know, the obvious ones are processed first and then, you know, like have bucket one, bucket two, and then continue to work on bucket two to make sure um, that the needed documentation, et cetera, is there. Okay, good. Okay, anyone else have anything they would like to share for the benefit of the county? Hey, Mike. Yes. Paul Harrison. Hi, Paul. Um, I'm obviously having issues here. <laughs> With our uh, limited technology, I have to use a phone in order to talk, and for some reason it wasn't allowing me. So um, I, I really don't have anything to add. Um, we do have things tallied up as far as where we're at so far. Um, we'll be anxious to hear how that all comes up and appreciate everybody's efforts and what they're trying to do. So thank you very much. One of the questions regarding income to the county, Paul, was uh, if this uh, uh, pandemic would have any effect on real estate tax delinquency. Do you have any indication that uh, there may be a large amount of delinquency than there has been in the past? I have received um, several phone calls from people wanting to know if there was going to be any adjustment or delay in our um, deadline. And of course, I had to tell them that no, that's it by the state. And we have to also assess a penalty after today. So, um, but th not a lot of that. However, our collections are still, uh, unless we unless we had a lot more people pay uh, for the whole year in the first half, we're still, for this being the last day, there's still a lot of money to collect. So, we'll know better uh, when things shake out here with, because we've got bank uh, bank deposits to make yet from the escrow payments and all that stuff that we always put off until after the deadline. So. Yeah, well, that, that'll be interesting to monitor for us. All right. Yes, and okay. we will continue to do that. All right, very good. Yep. Uh, yes. Anyone else? All Hi, right. good morning. This is Steve Kafis. Uh, working for Kathy now. I want to thank everyone for <laughs> um, uh, for the welcome. Uh, I look forward to meeting Stacy and Julie and working on the committee. Um, I do have one question, I guess, for Stacy and Julie is. You know, we've had some expenses out here at JFS already, obviously, like everyone else, but not having a particular um, grant allocation or anything like that that's come down from ODJFS or the feds. And so we've been spending um, those federal and state allocations for those costs. So in looking at what Kathy was talking about recording before, I don't want to get in the position of supplanting those funds with this CRF money. So I assuming that there is something in the OBM. I haven't read all the documentation, Julie, but um, I don't want to get in that situation where, um, you know, we're using the CRF money to supplant with our funds because all our fed, all our money in, in federal and state money coming down. Um, you know, I just don't want to get that, caught in that position. Okay. Good point. Good point, Steve. And, and other departments need to be conscious of that well as okay. well. Yep. Okay. Okay, we will uh, take a break and we are going to meet at the regular commissioner's meeting at 10 o'clock. It's now 936. Thank you all for participating. Certainly appreciate the input. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll have this conversation or a similar one soon. Thank you. <laughs>